Thanks for checking out our video. Feel free to join our free weekly newsletter called Pop Culture Annotated and also join our Discord server to talk with us and others that share your fandom in pop culture entertainment. Links in the description. Hey everybody, how's it going? So Godzilla King and the Monsters released its quote unquote final trailer today as of when I'm recording this, which in my mind, I'm just saying, you know, cool, I guess. I mean, they've been showing a lot more than I ever thought they would show leading up to the release. So I guess it's kind of nice that a few weeks out, they kind of, they finally just put a cap on stuff and they're like, you know what? Final trailer, let the hype just build from here. And that's it kind of coasting from here especially as Godzilla vs Kong just wrapped filming so I'm sure the marketing promotions team is going to slowly but surely go from Godzilla King of the Monsters to you know releasing tidbits here and there either on the Monarch Sciences website or on their Twitter feeds about Godzilla vs Kong. In this trailer, this final trailer, one thing that we really got to see is not only the different Titans but Ghidorah specifically and kind of how he attacks. And we've seen little bits and pieces. So I rewatched every TV spot, every trailer, every interview I've been reading it over again to really piece together, you know what, what is not only Ghidorah's like abilities like, what are those not only like, but also what is kind of how he attacks like, his fighting, if you will, his close combat. Like what is that like for Ghidorah? Because he's a very interesting titan, not only because of the wings, but because of the three heads. So the biggest thing that stuck out to me in this final trailer was his three-headed attack. And pretty much that's when he used his central head, and this is just against Godzilla at least, and he does it against Rodan as well. But for Godzilla, he uses his central head to attack the neck of Godzilla, while he uses his other heads to neutralize Godzilla's arms, which I thought was really cool. And just the way he did it, you really felt there was a lot of force to Ghidorah's movements and to just the way he was attacking his prey. I mean, they did say his movements were partially based off of snakes like a cobra, and you definitely got that vibe, the way his necks just kind of whipped out and attacked at Godzilla. And at the same time, we saw something similar when he was battling Rodan in the skies, where we saw what looks like his central head going for Rodan's neck and his two outside heads going for Rodan's, I guess what you would say would be his arms, which in his case are just his wings. So definitely really interesting for someone like Rodan that would obviously be the type of move that would cripple you in the skies. And for a character like Godzilla, that would definitely be the move that would, for the most part, keep you from being able to either defend yourself or even counter against Ghidorah, considering it's not like, you know, the tail of Godzilla can loop all the way around usually. Usually he has to move his body along with the tail to really make use of it. Definitely kind of interesting with the three-headed attack. I think that's a very interesting signature move for the character. And I hope if they ever make another Godzilla game in the near future, they incorporate that in there kind of as a close range melee type of grab-like move or just in general, just close range move. Now the other stuff obviously that we've seen multiple times in various iterations of the character is the gravity beams and this is just electrical looking beams of yellow energy released from his three different heads and the sign that they're kind of building up just like how Godzilla has his dorsal plates glow, Ghidorah has his neck glow as the energy rises up and eventually he releases it. Now the one thing I'm really curious about is if Ghidorah has to fully charge it every single time or if it's kind of like a battery and he has to charge it up but not every single time if he doesn't use all the juice he charges. And the reason I say that is because in the HBO IMAX like trailer that came out, the 5 minute one, we do get to see Godzilla versus Ghidorah in Antarctica, we get to see a bit of that. And he charges it up for his initial gravity beam blast. But then afterwards, he doesn't charge it up again when he shoots more at Godzilla. Maybe he doesn't always have to charge it up, it just depends on how much energy output he's putting into it. And going off of that, one thing they've shown bits and pieces of, and they definitely showed a lot more of it, if you watch the trailer in 0.25 speed, is something that I'm just going to nickname the Meteor Smash move. And pretty much what it looks like is Ghidorah is lifting up Godzilla and carrying him up into the atmosphere. How high? What level of the atmosphere? I don't know. But he brings him up there and then drops him, which is where we kind of see that thing falling from the sky on fire, it looks like for the most part. Not too dissimilar to something we saw on Pacific Rim. Now Ghidorah also has his weather disruption abilities, according to the Monarch Sciences website, related to his bioelectrical nature. And basically Ghidorah can conduct electrical currents along with distorting localized storm systems. And this allows him to create super storms wherever he's present. 
which explains why every time we've seen Ghidorah in trailers, there's always a storm around him, even when he's first awoken in Antarctica. There seems to be, like, in the pit he's in, kind of already thunder clouds, you know, cumulonimbus clouds forming around him, and going from that, it appears that he can absorb lightning, charge himself almost, as we've seen in trailers with his wings fully extended out, and they also say on the Monarch Sciences website that due to his unique dermal layer, Ghidorah can conduct electricity throughout his body, which can also be used not only to gather energy, but also redirect lightning from his wings to an opponent. So really it'd be kind of interesting, I mean can you imagine if he's releasing gravity beams and at the same time kind of redirecting lightning off his wings onto like let's say the same opponent, that'd be a pretty pretty lethal move I would imagine. And from there also we get some other abilities that I'm expecting that they didn't show in the trailer necessarily 100% clearly, but I think we saw bits and pieces of such as Ghidorah using constriction with his necks, which makes a lot of sense because he has a huge serpent influence and because of that it would make sense Ghidorah with his long necks would constrict that around his prey to try strangling them or crushing them. That's something that previous iterations of the character has done as well, so it wouldn't be unique to the MonsterVerse version. And two other abilities I kind of feel like we might see is some sort of healing regeneration power in also an alpha-like roar. And the reason I say that is because in multiple trailers, when they talk about the Titans, and they talk about basically something along the lines of the Titans following a creature, which in the final trailer they just blatantly say, yeah, the Titans are following Ghidorah, he's their alpha. They always show him roaring. And the one thing that keeps say, like saying to me at least while watching it is, all right, maybe Ghidorah is kind of just releasing a roar which displays for whatever reason his dominance over the other titans. I mean, that wouldn't be too far-fetched, especially when you consider the Orca, which is the device in the movie that can communicate slash manipulate titans, doesn't do anything too far out from that, in regards to using certain sound frequencies to basically get sway over the titans. Especially when you consider the fact that Monarch was studying Ghidorah in Antarctica, so it's very possible that maybe the Orca device the way it works was based upon Ghidorah, not too similar to how in the Transformers movie universe a lot of technology was based on Megatron and when Sector 7 had basically studied him for all the decades and all that stuff, they got a lot of technology from studying him. Just like that, I wouldn't be surprised to see Ghidorah maybe be the inspiration once they were studying Ghidorah for the Orca device. Maybe the frequencies Ghidorah makes isn't too dissimilar to what the Orca does. Now also with that, I mentioned healing and potentially regeneration, and that's just because that's been something widely speculated that Ghidorah will be able to, whether it's heal one head or just heal in general when absorbing energy, it makes a lot of sense, it would make him a lot more formidable as a foe, especially when you consider the fact that his long necks would presumably be very vulnerable to a lot of attacks. Who knows? You know, it's, it's going to be really cool to see this movie in IMAX. I, that's definitely how I'm going to try watching it. But comment below your guys' thoughts. What do you guys think about Ghidorah? You know, the way he attacks, Ghidorah's abilities in general. Obviously, I didn't go over every single ability because I was trying to focus more on maybe his fighting and all that stuff. But comment below your guys' thoughts. What do you guys think about this version of Ghidorah? Comment below, and we'll see you guys later.